Hello and welcome back to Crazy Hank TV. Today we thought we'd talk about the greatest miniseries in television history, and yes, I'm talking about Band of Brothers. I'm a huge fan of the miniseries. I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen each episode. Let's just put it at a lot. And I thought today would be fun to check back and look at some facts you may know about Band of Brothers or may not know about Band of Brothers. And let's start with Albert Blythe. He did not die of his wounds in 1948, as stated in the miniseries. Blythe served in Korea with the 187th Airborne. He never retired from the military. On December 10th, 1967, while on active duty in Germany, Blythe felt nauseated when he returned from a weekend at Bastogne, where he had taken part in ceremonies commemorating the Battle of the Bulge. On December 11th, 1967, Blythe was taken to the hospital where he was admitted and diagnosed with a perforated ulcer. He died in intensive care unit on December 17th after surgery he was buried in Arlington National Cemetery with full honor. So there you go. It was reported that he died in 1948 of his wounds in the miniseries. He went on to serve and never retired from the military. So that's a fact from Band of Brothers, the miniseries, that they got wrong. One thing I just learned that I never knew before from watching videos on YouTube of soldiers talking about their experiences, you know, for World War II, was that Buck Compton, the real Buck Compton, not the actor, didn't like Lewis Nixon. They didn't get along. He thought he was a drunk. He was just uh, just someone he didn't like, and I guess Lewis Nixon didn't like him. So I don't know if that's a fun fact. I mean, you, you look at the characters, you kind of go, well, and he does say, Buck Compton does say that Lewis Nixon was portrayed fairly in the miniseries. That part just kind of shocked me because you, you see how Major Winters is such good friends with Lewis Nixon, but Buck Compton and Lewis Nixon didn't get along. So there you go, fun fact. Or not. <laughs> the actors were chosen for their roles based on their physical resemblance to the real life counterpart. If you've seen photographs of the actual soldiers to the actors when they were about the same age, they do look a lot alike. So they did a good job with that. Plus the actors they chose don't just look like them. They're just incredible actors. Great job. The actors underwent a grueling 10-day boot camp to prepare them for their roles. Days began at 5 a.m., lasted 16 hours, and included everything from a five-mile daily run to jump preparation and weapons handling. Now, it's actually on YouTube. You can watch this, uh, the training behind the scenes of Band of Brothers. It's pretty interesting. If, if you're a fan, you may, want to, you may want to check it out. I'll post the link in the show notes for you to, if you just want to click on it. The making of Band of Brothers cost $120 million. At the time, the most expensive for a TV series ever. That, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of coin, but I think it was money well spent. The incredible forest battle scenes at Bastogne were shot in an airplane hangar using both real trees and 250 fake trees created on special effects and departments. I know the snow was fake, but again, it was all shot indoors. The 10-part miniseries featured an incredible 500 speaking roles. Here's a fun one. Damian Lewis turned up to his audition to play Captain Winters, severely hungover, having been at a party the night before and only having three hours sleep. A little different from the character he played, Major Winters, who didn't drink. A man was paid 200 euros a day just to roll the authentic 1940s cigarettes. I never knew that. And here's one I've seen, like I said, I've seen Band of Brothers probably 50 times. I never knew this. During the liberation of Eidenhoven in episode four, the real private Edward Babe Heffron can be seen in one of the shots. He's sitting down and waving a Kingdom of Netherlands flag. I'm literally going to go back and watch it today just to see it. I never knew that and never saw it. I've never seen it. Here's one I was just talking with my wife after we just watched the miniseries this last weekend. Buck Compton had been a catcher at UCLA prior to joining the Army. Neil McDonoghue, the actor who played him, was also a catcher at UCLA prior to his acting career. Now, if you watch the miniseries, the final one, Buck Compton returns to, to let everyone know he was all right. And you watch him. He looks like a catcher. He looks like he's played ball. Because you look at some of the actors, you can tell that they've never played baseball before because of their swing or their throws. A particularly heavy day of shooting or filming, used over 14,000 rounds of ammunition. The actor Tom Hardy, his first credited role, he played Janovich, is from Band of Brothers. And you look at the young actors, how many great actors 
and stars today were in Band of Brothers. It's amazing when you think about it. The actors were in constant contact with the veterans they were playing. Scripts were often ran past the ex-servicemen for accuracy and changed accordingly. So there you go. David Schwimmer, who did such a great job playing Captain Sobel, ended up on crutches when he injured his leg during boot camp training. Over 2,000 extras were used over the course of the production. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's some fun facts from Band of Brothers. Some I knew, some I didn't know. If you know something or have heard something about Band of Brothers that you think might be interesting, put it in the comment section. That's all I got. We'll be back later on. I'm out. Bye.